Hi, today is November 17, 2023, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 1839 for the year, Discarded Windows. On Wednesday, when last I did my laundry and I passed a collection of discarded windows on the southwest corner of 79th and West End, it behooved me to take a picture, even though my arms were holding a rather large bag of clean clothes. I had a rather strong feeling that I shouldn't simply pass those windows by. Perhaps they sucked, perhaps they were shitty windows that didn't keep the cold out, perhaps the windows rattled in the wind. Oh, fuck me, is the word window related to wind? It is. It is from the Old North, Vinder Aga, Wind Eye, which makes a lot of sense, and if you knew or suspected that already, then you might be thinking I'm pretty dumb, in which case, fuck you for thinking I'm dumb. Poem number 1840, A Break. She wanted a break, not only in her day, but in space-time. She wanted to fall or float or sink or swim in another dimension where space was infinite and time was non-existent, where she could feel small and let go of her burdens at the bocce ball factory. She was tired of running the bocce ball factory. Why couldn't one of her other siblings run the bocce ball factory? A break from the bocce ball factory and in the space-time continuum would do wonders for her mood. But she wondered if maybe all she really needed was a three-day weekend. Poem number 1841, right there. It was right there. And it was only their conviction that it wasn't there that stopped them from taking it. And they walked by and left it right there. Then someone else or some other people came upon it, and they picked it up and took it with them. And they treasured it and loved it and took care of it for the rest of their days. And for the rest of their days, they celebrated the day that they found it right there. Poem number 1842, What He Learned. After he lost it, he learned that he didn't need it, and he learned that what he needed was to learn that he didn't need it. And the last poem of the day, poem number 1843, The Sun Ball. The sun sent down a sun ball that was bright and brilliant and full of light and love. And it was warm, not crazy hot. And people could pick it up and hold it to their chest. And babies and kittens and goats and geese and pigs and puppies played with it. And composers composed and painters painted and writers wrote about it. And lovers fucked under its light and used or used it as a sex toy or invited it to join in as a third or fourth partner. And people masturbated to it or with it. And monkeys would throw it to each other or into the trees. And then other monkeys would climb up and get it, and bushes would hold it in their branches and never get burned, and sometimes the sunball would visit badly lit or unenlightened areas and shed light, and sometimes the sunball would provide warmth and joy where it was needed. Lately, the sunball has been overburdened, and people have taken it upon themselves to emulate the sunball and offer love and understanding and light and warmth and strength and hope and laughter and joy where a need for such things is found. And sometimes people remembered to thank the sun for its many gifts, including, of course, the sunball. All right, that's it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you.